We end up believing his lies and this wreaks havoc on our own lives in fear, doubt, worry, anxiety, stress, depression, mental issues, whatever it may be as a result of believing a lie from the enemy. So in today's episode, what I want to talk about is the power of the armor of God and how we can use that to defend against the enemy's lies and use the sword of the spirit to ultimately live in God's truth. So I'm really excited. Let's dive right into it. What is up, family? My name is Austin Blanchville, and I am your host for the Kingdom Purpose podcast, where we are all about really helping you live life on purpose with God by prioritizing what matters most with your kingdom values, living out a kingdom lifestyle. And in today's episode, we're in the armor of God. Armor of God. I'm really excited about this. I'm sure you are familiar with this scripture. It's in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10, is where the Apostle Paul starts talking about the armor of God. Now, just to preface a little bit of um, this section here, in the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul talks a lot about who you are in Christ, your identity, and who God is. And then at the very end here, he talks about how when there is the day that the evil one comes, we need to stand firm by putting on the armor of God. We know our identity in Christ. We know who God is. And then the enemy, what the enemy tries to do, all of his schemes, all of his tactics are different ways to try to get you to believe a lie a lie about yourself, or a lie about God. And this is where the Apostle Paul is telling you that you need to equip yourself with the armor of God to defend against the enemy's lies, to defend against his flaming arrows so that we can live in God's truth, to experience the goodness that he has for you, the goodness that he has for me, the goodness that he has for every single one of us by living out the gospel. So we are going to dive into each piece of armor specifically and talk a little bit about it. So the first one here that the Apostle Paul talks about is the belt of truth. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. This is a really cool concept. When you think about a belt, what does a belt do for you? It holds something up, right? It holds your pants up. So think about the belt of truth being able to hold you up so that you can stand firm. Also, it is buckled. Think about that. Buckling it. It's tight. It's secure. It's unmovable, right? You want it buckled tight around you to hold you up. So wrap yourself with the belt of truth. Then with the breastplate of righteousness. Think about the breastplate. It's the largest piece of armor. So in order to defend against the enemy's lies, we need to be righteous. What's cool about the word righteousness is that it is the quality of being morally right or justifiable. Think about it. We just talked about truth, being able to stand firm in God's truth. And then with the breastplate of righteousness, this is just um, an overall extension of that truth of being morally good, having those values, being righteous, right? So being being righteous in that way. So that is the second piece of armor here that he talks about that's crucial. And then he mentions next how we must be fitted, our feet be fitted with the gospel of peace. Now this is really cool because you think about what what your feet are meant to do. They're meant to move. They're meant to walk. And so when you have shoes that are fitted with the gospel. You are meant to walk and carry out the gospel in truth while you're wrapped with truth. You're protected with truth. And think about that breastplate as well when it comes to protecting one of the most important areas of your body, right? Your heart, protecting your heart with righteousness. And then you've got your feet that are fitted to be able to share the gospel, to be able to move, to be able to walk and share the gospel of peace, of good, news with others. And then next, shield of faith. We've got the shield of faith and it says to be able to extinguish the flaming arrows from the enemy. So now we've got a shield. We've got this ability to be able to move something to deflect these arrows, to deflect these lies so that they don't penetrate, so that they don't come near us, right? So when we have faith, 
This is an opportunity for us to extinguish the enemy's lies by being, being able to protect out here as compared to letting it hit us, right? We have something to be able to block those. So that's where faith comes into play here. So we've got truth. We've got righteousness. We've got the gospel of peace. Okay, we have peace. And then we have faith. For the last defense, we have the helmet of salvation. When you think about what the helmet covers and guards, it protects your mind. When we, when we step into that place of salvation, it's like a protection of our mind. And then finally, he mentions the sword of the Spirit. In, in, in reference to this in, in the Bible, it was really just like an 18-inch dagger, about this big, not that big. Okay. When we think about the sword of the spirit, like we're going to be slaying the enemy going out and doing all this war, like, like the sword of Goliath. But no, that's not it. It's just a small little dagger. And the purpose of this dagger is another defense mechanism. It says the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This small little dagger is meant to be able to dig out whatever lies that do penetrate. Whatever flaming arrows that get past your shield, that get past your armor, that starts to penetrate, you have this dagger to be able to dig those out and replace them with God's word, to replace them with his truth. So what you need to do is look at not only defending against the flaming arrows, defending against the enemy, enemy's lies, but what has already took root? What flaming arrows have already penetrated? What lies are you currently believing that you need to take the sword of the spirit, dig those out, replace them with God's word? What's cool after this, he says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Another aspect of defense is to pray. When you dig those lies out, pray. When you dig those lies out, pray. Continue to connect with our heavenly father because he is available to us 24-7 constantly. He is available to you and to me to connect with him, to understand where he's calling us, how he's leading us, how he's speaking to us, how he knows us, how he loves us, how he is wanting peace for us, righteousness, truth, faith, right? Salvation. We are saved through him. I really love these verses here talking about the armor of God, because what happens is the enemy comes to kill steal, and destroy. He is going to attack. So what do we need to do to prepare for his attacks? And this is the way to be able to do it. Whenever we take a step where God is leading us, the enemy is right there trying to bring us back to a comfortable space. So as we move forward, we need to be equipped with the armor of God so that we can move forward to be able to defend and deflect the enemy's lies so it doesn't penetrate who we are. It doesn't penetrate our belief in our wonderful and amazing, incredible heavenly father and what he says about us and his will, his provision for us and his guidance and his wisdom and his love. All of these things as the fruit of the spirit. We need to protect that with this armor. And this is the ways to be able to do that. So what lies are you currently believing right now? Okay, if you're experiencing any sort of emotion that is is based around fear or worry, doubt, anxiety, depression, whatever it is, figure out that emotion, trace it back to a thought, and then look at where that thought is stemming from. Okay, what lie are you believing that's creating these thoughts, these negative thoughts that are determining how you show up? They're determining your actions in the way that you, you perceive things. So you need to look at, okay, what lie am I ultim ultimately believing? What lie has the enemy, what weeds has he planted in my mind as compared to nurturing the seeds that God has given me so that I can experience the fruit of the spirit. So when we have the fruit of the spirit, we protect it with the armor of God. I hope this helps you in your journey and living out a kingdom lifestyle with living your life on purpose with God. That's what this is all about. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, for more videos like this, share in the comments some takeaways, maybe some highlights, maybe something that stood out to you. If this is something that you want to dive more into these types of videos, I would love to be able to help in any way that I possibly can. God bless you. Love you. Thanks for being here and look forward to connecting with you and seeing how God moves to, through, and from you.